All right, what's going on, you beautiful boys and girls? Welcome back to another episode of Pack the Brew. Appreciate you guys joining us. If you're new here, I'm Ryan. That's Gage. That's about to talk. This week, we're previewing the National League Central. Today, it's all about the Milwaukee Brewers. Will they repeat as National League Central Division champions, or will they come up short? We've talked all week about the Bre- about the Central being wide open, boomer bust, as Gage has called it. Uh, the Brewers could easily win it again. You could easily see them finish in fourth. It could be a five-game difference between the two. Gage, do you want to start this one off in the rotation, buddy? Yeah, absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode. Uh, I am Gage. You just heard Ryan speak. If you enjoy baseball, you enjoy baseball culture, stick around. Uh, if this is your first one, if this, if you've listened to another one before, thank you. Uh, hope you stay with us for another season. But Ryan, let's start with this rotation. I am so excited for Brewers baseball to return. Uh, I was listening to the radio. Uh, listen to MLB.com today. It was it was great. Uh, Freddie Peralta opens it for me. Almost certain this is Freddie's coming out season. I mean, he's a, he's a dark horse to win Cy Young in my head. I really love Freddie. Um, it's his first season as the KO punch for Milwaukee, the ace, the 1-1. I think he'll do really well in that role. He's absolutely a dark horse to win the Cy Young. Uh, losing Burns and Woody has Freddie as the ace and just just – don't forget about him. He was part of the big three, three-headed monster in this rotation for a reason. It's his time to shine as Aces team has already been confirmed. He is an opening day starter. No doubt about it. Super excited to see what Freddie can do this year. Totally. Uh, my two is going to be Aaron Ashby coming off of last season. Not 100% sure what to think of him, but I'd really like to see him at the two-hole for Milwaukee. I think that he'll be, honestly, be the point of make or break for this pitching staff. I think if he does really well, you'll see this rotation flourish. If you see him struggle a little bit, you could see a little bit of slowdown in 3-4. And well, for me, it's 3-4, and four, but 3-4-5 uh, for the Brewers. I'm not sure on Ashby yet. I think if he is healthy, make the opening day roster. I think we might see him in the bullpen at first and then maybe ease his way into the starting rotation. Not 100% sure what they're going to do with Aaron Ashby. He will make an impact this year, so I'm excited to see how he bounces back. My number two, though, is going to be actually Wade Miley. Nice year last year, but overall, pretty questionable number two guy, but still a great vet that you want in the clubhouse. And you mentioned it. That's why I have waited at my three. He's a vet. You know what he brings in, season in, season out. I think that if you get last year's version of Miley, he's a very solid three that you can't complain too much about. Oh, absolutely. You know you know what you have in Wade Miley. You just hope he can stay healthy and keep it up, really, is really the big question for him. My number three, though, is going to be Dale Hall. He's the X factor for not just this season, but for much more. Because if he works out as a good starter, it's like, oh, wow, the Brewers did great in the burn straight. If he falls back into that reliever role, then it's like, you know, we'll see how Joey Ortiz does. But then it's like, you know, uh-oh, you trade Burns for a reliever and a glove first, you know, infielder. That's not exactly a great trade for the Cy Young. But if Deal Hall works out, his ceiling's through the roof. I, I mean, I really do believe in him this year. Yeah, he's projected, or he's he's my four. Uh, I I obviously think I'm very high on DL Hall. Obviously, he wears my blue and yellow. Um, he's projected for a one and a half WAR and roughly a four ERA, which I'll take for a rookie year. I'll take that every single day. If you get that major league experience and you know you don't make it where it's unwinnable games, go ahead. Especially with the offense that I'm fairly confident in, which is a complete flip flop of last year. FYI, um, DL Hall. I am like very, very excited for him. Really hoping that he works out. Absolutely for uh, Deal Hall, it's uh, exciting time to see how he can do uh, in that starting role. But number, my number four is gonna be Colin Ray. Uh, Surprise last year, earned a big league contract this off season. Last year he was just like, a, eh, you know, we'll give him an invite to spring training. You know, maybe he'll eat some ends in AAA. Gets the call, has a few nice outings, and he's here in the starting rotation on opening day. Yeah, for sure. Do you have a five? Yeah, my number five could be all over the place. You know, it could yep. be Ashby, as Same you mentioned. Uh, Joe Ross could be the guy. My number five is actually me, Jacob Junis. Either him or Ross or Ashby, as I said. Uh, both of these guys could be lawn relievers, if not the number five. So it's a pretty open job for him. Or you could see a prospect like Robert Gasser uh, get that number yep. five spot. So it's a very open spot there. But I feel like the first four are uh, pretty locked in. 
That's kind of that's kind of what I thought too. Uh, I think you can flip a coin for that fifth spot, and I I don't have any worries about that fifth spot, regardless of who you pick. I think I'm confident in pretty much all of those guys. Uh, you could also give it to the very very strong bullpen of the Milwaukee Brewers if you really need to take some games. My closer, obviously, for this just muscle, just brick house of a bullpen is Devin Williams. The swing and miss merchant is back in full force. All star year, <laughs> all star last year looks to do the exact same thing this season. Looking forward to watching his airbender wipeout hitters again. Yeah, pretty easy one for the closer. Uh, there were some trade rumors revolving around him. There's always trade rumors with the smaller market teams and their best players, and the trade proposals are for, uh, you know, slapdick prospects as Blake Snell would say uh he's the best pitch in baseball there's a reason why a few of the guys that we have had on here for interviews said like if I could have one pitch it'd be Devin Williams because it's the best pitch in baseball and it's it's so cool uh it's awesome that the swing and miss merchant by the way is a reference to a tweet I'm I don't believe that thoroughly uh, my setup one is going to be Abner Uribe. This dude's a big league closer. Javik Blake, direct quote, this dude's a big league closer. But, you know, he happens to be a setup man, which we're pretty lucky to have. That turbo sinker is disgusting combined with his heater. If it's dialing, you just got to go up there, close your eyes, swing the bat if you're if you're an opposing hitter. Same for me. Uribe is my setup guy. Sometime they're going to trade Devin. They're never going to play pay their closers. Devin's going to be a trade. Sometime it's going to hurt. But I'll tell you, Uribe is going to make us forget about him. He's going to be next up. He's going to be the next flamethrower, lights out closer of the Milwaukee Brewers. Dude is a dog. Uh, my setup, yes. too, is going to be Hobie Milner, one of the biggest unsung heroes from Milwaukee last season. Didn't matter if you needed one with the bases cleared or three with the bases juiced. I swear, every time he got out of it, it felt like every single time it. It, I'm sure that there's moments that he missed it, but it felt like it was every single time he got put in a spot where we needed him, he delivered. Um, just a big time, big moment guy. And I don't know if you remember last year, but he made Bryce Harper one of the most feared hitters in baseball just stay in the batter's box. He did not even like move yeah. at all. So I don't know if he was just scared of Hobie Miller, what his strategy was, but I'm going to run my narratives through that one because <laughs> Hobie Miller is incredible. But I actually have a different setup too, guy. I feel like the job's pretty open. There's lots of really good guys. It could be Trevor Miguel. Uh, it could be Hobie. I actually have Joel Piams right here. He was part of that Contreras trade uh, that brought William Contreras over to Milwaukee, brought Sean Murphy over to Atlanta, Ruiz to Oakland. And, I mean, you want to talk about a steal of a trade from the Milwaukee Brewers. If you just got Contreras alone, you did great. But to add Piamps on there, I mean, just unbelievable move by the Brewers front office. Yeah, and you can totally go through that Brewers bullpen and name guys. Uh, Trevor mm -hmm. McGill is another guy that comes to mind. Bryce Wilson, if you will. Uh, and my starting lineup for this bullpen to you know be set up by is going to start headline with my MVP, William Contreras. William Contreras gained a ton of defensive ability last season. I think that caliber of defense combined with the bat that he brought last season, it's a strong M is a very, very strong argument for MVP of this team. Same for me, William Contreras. This, to me, is the best catcher in baseball. He had the highest war last year. He His defense went from mm, not sure if he can stick it behind home plate to he has the best defensive glove in baseball that's how yeah i don't know what the brewers catching lab does to these guys but it, it's just stupid how good they are to me he's best catching baseball gauge is he your number one catcher yeah i i think so and i was actually looking at this trade the other day it's so crazy to think that at the time we were like sean murphy is going to we we're going to get walked over by Sean Murphy and we can't believe that he was in the same deal as the Milwaukee Brewers and ah, rah, rah. and then you look at it and you're like wow like somehow in that trade we were the winners of it which is just unbelievable um William Contreras the best catcher in baseball it you the numbers back me up here I'm wearing a Brewers hat I got Brewers flags behind me but the numbers back me up here uh, my first baseman is going to be Reese Hoskins. I'll talk about it more later, but this get for the Brewers is massive. It's a massive upgrade, to say the least. Um, love the energy that Reese brings in big moments. Can't wait to feel that at the ballpark this season. Hoskins was the big free agent sign in this offseason for the Brewers, and as a Brewer fan, 
Gage, I know you agree. I assume all the Brewer fans listening agree that we were as excited as you could possibly be about a free agent signing uh, for Reese Hoskins. We love Rowdy. We we always will. We wish him the best. But Hoskins is a big upgrade from what Rowdy was after May last year. So to have that difference in the lineup is just huge for the Brewers. And I think that that'll be a big part of you know, an October push, if that's what happens with the Brewers. When you look back on it, that move will be why. Uh, My second baseman is going to be Bryce Terang. I think that that Terang's defense is unbelievable, but I'm really rooting for that bat to improve a little bit. A 62 WRC plus at a a contributing position like second baseman is tough. He wasn't even in the top 100 as per WRC plus goes um, for second baseman, which is not a great look. If he gets that bat up, he'll be the every, everyday second baseman. But until he does that, I think his job is not 100% his. I think it I think it could go to multiple different people. His defense is as good as it gets at second base. But bat-wise, you already, you already said it. The numbers weren't pretty. A lot of his at-bats weren't pretty. I feel like the Brewers don't have a ton of hope in him, so I feel like it's a pretty short leash for him. I feel like that's why Freelich has taken a lot of reps in the infield that you could see Freelich at second base. You could see Ortiz at second base. You could see someone else at second base. But I feel like Turain's leash is very, very short, and you might see him come in just late in the games to lock down on defense with the lead. Uh, but Turain, right now, opening day, is my starting second baseman. Uh, my shortstop is going to be Willie A. Uh, was in plenty of trade talks this offseason, obviously, but I'm glad to see that he'll still be in Milwaukee per Matt Arnold. Um, he was a Brewers home run leader last season, so that pop at, that pop at short is just massive for this team. Uh, obviously a character, too. Uh, great dude. And you mentioned the trade rumors. I still go, I still believe a trade can be done before opening day if the right team calls with the right deal. You again, even if the Brewers are in position, you know, in first place in a playoff race, whatever it may be, at the deadline, you could see him trade it if the Brewers get the right deal. They're not afraid to trade their guys while in first place. We've seen it before, like Josh Hader, uh, but Willie Adamas. Uh, Just as likable as it gets, a huge clubhouse guy and a guy with a ton of pop and just an overall great player too. Absolutely. My third baseman is going to be Joey Ortiz. That dude's glove is also unbelievable at third. Um, enjoyed watching the highlights when he got moved over in the Burns deal. Um, but more than that, I, I think that he could genuinely be a solid third baseman for Milwaukee. Um, obviously, what's look, what it's looking like is that he splits reps with Freilich um, just because of the amount of outfield talent that Milwaukee has and just moving, hit, moving Freilich uh, to the hot corner. Uh, ends up being the solution in the GM set. I feel like at this point, it's pretty clear that Adamus is not going to be extended. So whenever he is not in Milwaukee again, Joey Ortiz is the shortstop of the future. But right now, he is the third baseman of 2024. He's a glove first guy. He's shown some nice bat skills overall in the minors. He's going to need to show that in the in the majors because the Brewers cannot have another glove first guy in this lineup. They need someone with a, another pretty good bat to it, especially at third base. For sure. My left fielder is going to be Garrett Mitchell. Uh, I really would like to see him stay healthy because we have yet to see a full healthy season from Garrett Mitchell. But in games that he's played in, he's like made an auto impact hit a grand slam early um, uh, last year and ended up making a couple huge plays uh, in his, like, I think half season when he got called up, ended up hitting a walk-off at, during that time. So uh, I have the video of him ringing the bell in my camera roll, and that's that's what makes me think of it. But really rooting for Garrett Mitchell. Got a Garrett Mitchell jersey in the closet right now. So really pulling for him it, for to make that left field spot. And Mitchell became a fan favorite really quickly in Milwaukee. So I hope he does well. We all hope he does well. Uh, Again, all these young outfielders, there's lots of trade rumors with every single one of them. Uh, But my left fielder is actually Christian Yelich. He had a big jump last year after struggling a little bit the years before. He took a major upgrade, especially in late April, in May, in June. He was almost back to MVP form in those couple couple of months. So if he can do that again, that would be uh, pretty damn cool to see. He was also a Gold Glove finalist, so he's showing a little bit defense. Too. For sure. My center fielder is going to be Jackson Chorio. Uh, I think he could win rookie of the year. Very excited for him. The reason I put him in center is because of 
you know, the easy transition is what I'm rooting for, for him to easily adapt to big league ball, not having to learn another left field or right field position, being able to, you know, just put him in a spot that he knows what to do. Um, but, but I wouldn't be shocked that, you know, see come post all-star break, he's moving around the outfield. They're not just putting him in center. Yeah, I could definitely see that. He was more than capable of playing all three positions out there. He got a historic contract this offseason. It might take him a minute because that pressure is on a very young guy. So it might take him a minute to adjust to major league pitching. Not saying he won't get it eventually, but he might come off with a slow start. But overall, I still have him as a starting uh, opening day starting center fielder. Uh, what about your right fielder? My right fielder is going to be Sal Freelich. Uh, lots of trade talks around him, too. Uh, to the Padres, even took a couple calls with them. Some infield talk with them also. So he's been uh, his name's been talked about a lot this offseason. But right now, he's a really good outfielder from the Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, just a consistent guy, a safe guy that you can rely on for the future. Absolutely. Uh, same here. He made a big-time impact from the moment he was called up last season. I'm excited for a sophomore season. Uh, very excited to see what he has in store. My DH is going to be Christian Yelich. Um, I struggle big time with what to do with Yelich because I think, I mean, Arnold said it. He's already said that he's going to keep him in the outfield. But I, just as far as I'm concerned, I think he's totally the DH of this team. I know we got Gary Sanchez. I'm fully aware. Um, Yelich struggles with his back. He's missed games. He missed like 11 out of 12 in a sp in a stretch because his back was tough. And with a contract like he has, I think your priority is keeping him healthy. And he obviously still has the stick. He can still swing the bat. Um, so keeping him healthy, and that that has to be your main priority in my head at least. And he's got the bat to totally play DH um, and do that. I just I know I'm aware that. He should be an outfielder, but I really think DH is the right move. I think after this year, you're going to see him as a primary DH. But right now, you go and make a sign like Gary Sanchez with the it amount is, of pop yeah. he has, you need him in the lineup. So my DH right. is going to be Gary Sanchez. Uh, just a huge upgrade over Jesse Winker and Andrew McCutcheon the year before. This is a guy that you expect to slug 500. Even if that batting average is not there, doesn't matter. If he's slugging 500 with 30 home runs, that's all you need to know. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, with the ad of Sanchez, it's just crowded. There's guys that should be playing that aren't going to play, and it's just tough. It's a logjam. It's a good problem to have if you're the Brewers, but also a lot of these guys – you kind of want them playing consistently if that's down in the minor leagues or if that's a trade for a for an arm. But yeah. you have a lot of good guys on the bench that are more than capable of starting. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, and I think, I think, I mean, during my awards here, I've got two guys that don't even like that didn't make my starting lineup to get love here. But uh, my MVP I mentioned is going to be William Contreras. Uh, that that best. Catcher in baseball, not as huge. I think he could be an MVP candidate Like when it's all said and done this season. He totally has that in him. I, I would love for him to you know do that. Obviously, with the talent out in L.A., that would be a, it would be a miracle, but would love to see him do it. Absolutely. I could see top 10 MVP voting for him. I don't think he's going to be a finalist. It's just it's, it's tough, especially it's, yeah. in a small market like Milwaukee. You're not going to see that love that he he deserves as the best catcher in baseball. He's the best all-around player on this Brewers team. Uh, like I said, I think Tariel, it's just maybe doesn't – he's not going to be a Cunha in his first year, and that's perfectly okay. Uh, Tariel is going to be MVP in 2025 and so on, but right now it's going to be Contreras. Yeah, I love that. Uh, my Cy Young is going to be Freddie. I mentioned it, dark horse for NL Cy Young. Uh just get it, get it printed, man. Give me the, give me the Freddie Peralta Cy Young love. I, I need it. Yeah, um, I, I also have Freddie, and I am so excited to see what he can do this year. Do you, do you actually believe he can, he can be a finalist for the Cy Young, like the legit one? I would love to see him be a dark horse, but you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say that I'd love to see it, and I'm gonna say that. He totally could, and I think he has it in him. But for right now, we're going to chill out. We're going to say that, like, it's not realistic, but I would love to see it. I'm not saying it can't happen either. Um, you know, I'm not as passionate about my Zach Gallon take. Like, I think Zach Gallon could legitimately do it. But I think Freddie could all – Freddie will be the runner-up. How about that? How about that? That'll be a lot of fun. I like fun. that. I like that. <laughs> I'll tell you, 
I'd be shocked if he didn't receive at least a few votes. Even if that yes, isn't top I three, I think he gets a couple votes this year. He really takes that big jump from, hey, this guy was part of the three-headed monster to, hey, this guy is one of the better pitchers in baseball. Yeah, and I think it's unfair to him that dude legitimately got, like, he got buried by Brandon Woodruff and Corbin Burns, which is just a very good problem to have if you're Milwaukee. But that's just, that's unbelievable. Uh, my rookie of the year, obviously, is going to be Jackson Chorio. Um, I, I would assume you're, you're Cy Young. You're Cy Young's Freddie, too? Yes, my Cy Young is Freddie. Sorry if I didn't say yeah. that. Yeah, no, all good. Uh, my rookie of the year is going to be Jackson. Uh, he looks up to live. He looks to live up to those expectations of being the next Ronald Cooney Jr. He's got it in him. Looking forward to it. Dude moves fast. Um, I loved the swinging bunt video right right away. It's great video. Looking forward to seeing that in the big leagues and not in spring training ball. Absolutely. I also have Trio as my rookie of the year, but don't count out Joey Ortiz. I think he can make a run in for the Brewers rookie of the year. Also, I totally agree with you. Uh, my breakout's going to be Joey Ortiz. Uh, Brewers acquired Ortiz via the Burns trade. think he'll get a lot of playing time at third. He's an unbelievable glove. Love it a lot. Looking forward to him. I also have Ortiz as my breakout. I think D.L. Hall is another good option here. Ortiz, 15 games last year, did struggle at the plate a little bit, but it's also only 15 games, nothing to get too worried about. For sure. My bounce back is Joey Weimer. I saw the video of his new swing. I know you saw the video of his new swing. He's similar to Key Brian Hayes in the way that he doesn't need a Silver Slugger-esque bat to play every single day. This dude has an unbelievable glove. I totally think I, I think it's so unfair that the Brewers have so much outfield talent that dude, that this dude's just not going to like get the love that he deserves. But a beautiful trade piece um, could totally, like, he could totally hit 300 with that swing. I'm looking forward to it so much. I'm not going to lie. The second I saw that Twitter video of his new swing, I went on eBay and I went and bought, I went and bought a, uh, uh, autograph rookie uh, out of 50 for him. So I spent a pretty penny on that one because I'm like, I'm investing in this guy right now just because yeah. he switches his swing up. So uh, I'm very excited to see Joey Weimer this year. And I really hope he gets an actual chance in the outfield because like, cause I said, him and Mitchell both deserve time out there, but I just want it to be consistent. So it just sucks to see that. There's not really yeah. a spot for him. So um, my bounce back guy is actually me, Willie Adamas. So 95 OPS plus for him in 2023. We expect better from him. There were times this year where it was just like, you know, what are we going to do with this guy? You know, it's like his trade value is so low. You can't trade him. Uh, you just expect a little better of a bat from Willie Adamas. Yeah, uh, he was the home run leader for Milwaukee last year. So I got saying totally... a lot. Yeah, right. I know it's not. <laughs> Yeah, I I just I that's yeah I that that's that's brutal. Um, <laughs> my 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 favorite off season move though to pivot off of that is Reese Hoskins. Uh, the Brewers went got some big time pop in Reese Hoskins, who hasn't had a full season with less than twenty seven homers since the start of his sophomore sophomore year in baseball. Um, for the record, twenty twenty is not a full season. That one doesn't count. So the Bru- oh sorry. Yeah, so he he would have been the Brewers' home run leader, um, which is just awesome. That's just crazy. Yeah, we, Reese Hoskins, pretty easy one here. The Brewers needed some extra help in the lineup. That was no secret to anybody, especially if you just watched the two playoff games last year. Uh, but if you watch every game like most of us do, it's it's not exactly hard to see the numbers show it too. Hoskins, he can provide 35 home runs, especially Milwaukee. Super excited to see how he does in the middle of this lineup. My underrated is a guy that nobody's mentioned so far. It It is Andrew Monasterio, a critical bench piece for the Brewers last season. Definitely doesn't get enough love in my opinion. I like Monasterio. Uh, he's not a guy I want starting, but I'm more than happy with him uh, on the bench to provide a little bit of an extra spark, especially what he was last year. Uh, getting called up, supposed to be a, you know like a, a week or two, and he stayed, and he was consistently the everyday third baseman. So a heck of a job for Monasterio last year. I like that pick a lot. My most underrated, though, he's not underrated in Milwaukee at all, but he's underrated to, the, to I feel like, the media and the rest of the fans. Uh, w- William Contreras, man, uh, he's the best catcher in baseball. And you don't have to act like that, 
But there's people that act like Zion top five, which is just blows my mind how underrated he is, according to the fans. Yeah, that one's brutal. Ryan, the question of the podcast, where does this team finish? Well, we keep on saying it, right? How wide open the National League Central is. Either all five of these teams can win the division, all five of these teams can finish in fifth place. I would not be surprised if one through five are single digit apart. Yeah. But the you look at the Brewers, won the division by a good amount last year. I felt like they got better. Woody, they lost Woody. It sucks, but he didn't really play a big part for him last year because he was injured. Burns, yes, it hurts losing him. Not going to act like it doesn't. But you put a big upgrade at DH. You had a hole at DH last year. You have a big upgrade at first base. The bullpen is as elite as ever. I felt like the Milwaukee Brewers got better this offseason. They won it by a lot last year. It's hard to knock them down from that. I have the Brewers yep. going back to back and winning the National League Central again. 92 wins lot last year. Yeah, they lost Burns, but adding someone like Grease Hoskins, I felt like they did not get worse. What do you say to people that are concerned about the starting rotation? I think that's fair to be a little concerned as of right now. There's definitely some question marks in there. I don't think Jacob Junis is going to be there. I think you're going to see the prospects join this rotation soon. If that's Robert Gasser, if it's Jacob Mizorowski, if it's Carlos F. Rodriguez, you're going to see a lot of extra help Mm -hmm. in this rotation. And again, prospects are not guarantees, but these guys have a lot of hype for a reason. So there's some question marks. I'm not going to deny that at all. I think you have a dark horse Cy Young, and you have some very good, consistent guys, and you also have some guys with super high ceilings. It's not something I'm going to lose sleep over in this rotation, but I understand the question marks from other fans. Fair. Um, I I am concerned about the starting rotation. <laughs> that's, okay. that, that's, that's not at all. That's, you know... And you know when people ask me, they're like, "Oh, okay. like, hey, hey, what do you what do you think about the Bruce? I'm like, I, I'll always tell you they're gonna finish in first because the day that they don't finish in first, and I, I, you know, I was wrong. I, it doesn't matter if I'm wrong, but if I'm wrong and they and I said that you know they're gonna finish, I'm gonna, they're gonna finish third in the central, and then they go and take first, then I look like an idiot because I am a big <laughs> Bruce fan. So I'll always tell you they'll finish in first regardless. Uh, but I truly believe it here. Even though I am nervous about that starting rotation, you mentioned it. That DH, you know, Gary Sanchez, great pickup. Reese Hoskins, great pickup. I mean, everybody is, like, everybody forgets about DL Hall. Like you mentioned, all the prospects that they have in the system, I just, I feel like they're, I feel like it's enough. I do. I feel like it's enough. I'm not saying they're going to, you know, they're not going to shut out teams left and right like they did with Burns, Woody, and uh, Peralta. But they're going to do enough for this offense to get them by, and they'll win the Central that way. That's, that's you know, anything more than that is gravy. But I am I am very convinced that this team can win the Central and will do it. And, the, again, love the take, not saying you're on at all. I feel personally that the ads to the lineup outweigh the losses in the rotation. And that's why I'm saying I think the Brewers got better this offseason. So, and you said it. They're not going to shut out a ton of teams, and that's fine. They're finally going to be able to have shootouts with you yeah, score-wise. So the Brewers can actually score some runs. They can hit a lot of bombs, which is what they've needed the past few years. Yeah. They've had the Cy Young starts, but they haven't been able to score runs. Burns had – what? didn't he have a perfect game going the ninth inning in Yankee Stadium or was it a no-hitter, whatever it might have been, and we lost it like in the 11th with the because we didn't score a damn run? That's the difference. Reese Hoskins is hitting a ball at 330 feet to right field in that short porch to win the game. That's the difference yeah. with this lineup. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. Uh, finally going to get run support for pitchers. That's going to be a nice feeling. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening to another one. As always, you can go find the links in the description of this episode. You can go find us anywhere you can find podcasts, anywhere you, you know, you're on social media at pack the brew and everything. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening to another one. We will see you in the next episode.